guys, I am so excited. I'm so excited. Um, yeah, I found her. I found her. Let me tell you what happened. I went to the garden center because I was checking some prices on pots as I wasn't getting a reply from them from by email. Oh, thank you everybody for tuning in. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Glad to have you here. If you haven't been on my channel uh, a long time, you won't know that I lost a Phalaenopsis that had the most amazing fragrance. It was a mini fowl. I called her Aurora, but she, oh, her fragrance was so intense, which I didn't recognize in the garden center only until I got her home. And then I was like, who are you? What is smelling so good? None of my summer blooming fowls were open. And I got close to the new one and she was so intense in her fragrance. So back to my garden center, I went there, I checked the price of the pots, but before that, as you do, you scour around the orchid area, even though you have no intention of buying whatsoever, right? Right, me, no intention. But I was filming as well at the same time. And I was done with my B-rolls and then I moved away and I smelt her. I was still at my own level, height level, eye level. I looked at my daughter and I said, I can smell her, she's here. She goes, what are you talking about? I said, she's here, I can smell her. And then I looked down just at an angle and I saw mottled leaves. And I'm like, this is her, this has got to be her. And I stuck my nose into the top of the bag to confirm and it was intense. And I have her back. So this is Aurora 2.0. <laughs> and I say 2.0 because she's not exactly, oh, I gotta slow down. <sighs> I gotta slow down. She is not exactly, let me show you, ah, too excited. She's not exactly like Aurora because Aurora was like, you know, mini as in very small leaves, more silver on the mottling than this one. And Aurora was not, let me do this without breaking anything. That would be good because I'm so excited. Slow down, Nina. Aurora was not peloric. So let's get the light and the focus. And this one is peloric. Now, I am going to be very honest with you. I am not 100%, let's say, over the moon about the cute little blooms here. They look stained, they look broken, but they're not. It's just the way the bloom is going to be. I like the peloric. I never have any problem with a peloric phalaenopsis, peloric anything. I love it, it adds interest. But these are not exactly the cleanest, prettiest looking blooms. They look, even when they're fresh, they look a little bit dirty and bruised. I do not care. <laughs> Her fragrance, oh my goodness, it is just like Aurora, the original. And I am over the moon, please, because I was like, oh no, I don't, I can't, I shouldn't, I won't. And I just said to my daughter, oh my goodness, I hope she's not expensive. I don't want her to be expensive. This is gonna be awful because I've been looking for this fragrance since I lost the original. And she was only 10 euros, you guys. And I was like, okay, that's it, I'm having her. I didn't even check the roots or anything. I did now that I'd gotten home. But, you know, the fragrance, it is like a Leodora sweet memory times 10. Okay, I exaggerate. Times nine. Leodora sweet memory times nine. I'm a meter away from her. Only three blooms open. And it's right here. It's hitting me hard. It is so delicious. I cannot, cannot tell you that yes, the blooms aren't the prettiest. I do not care if I, like I said, I was like, let's say a meter and a half above where this orchid was displayed. And I just looked at my daughter and said, she's here. I know she's here. She's here somewhere, something along those lines, just by the fragrance. So I'm very, very excited, so happy. Um, but let's have a look and have a see what we are dealing with on the root front. I had a look and a peek through the plastic just to make sure that if there's anything before I could film her and tell you all about this story, <laughs> that I could intervene quickly and then tell you about it afterwards. But the only thing I saw, which is a bit concerning, are the little patches of 
mold there because they scratch off, so that's not mineral deposits. Um, there's a little bit of webbing going on here. So I recognize these spider webs. They make little holes. They're normally in my pots as well, so I'm not worried about that. And uh, she doesn't need watering just yet. Her roots are, you know, they're still somewhat green, so I don't need to do anything there. But what I am going to do is douse this whole pot with a major, major, I mean, she is pretty from the back. That is cute. Those colors are cute. Well, that'll be a novel way of displaying a fowl, wouldn't it? <laughs> from the back. <laughs> but what I am going to do is douse her in hydrogen peroxide. 3% all the way around. Because at this moment in time, I don't want to interfere with repotting unless I really, really, really have to. And she has not had a cow mag bath at all. Because I wanted the roots, the media and everything to be on the drier side in this case, to get the full, full impact of the hydrogen peroxide. So I know that I'm not going to get into every single nook and cranny into the pot. I'm going to do my best actually to do so by really going to town with the hydrogen peroxide and not thinking that I'm overdoing it. At least to ward off anything that could be in the pot without now unpotting her and then possibly losing her again because of the method that I have my setup of LECA and self-watering and we are in the middle of winter. And I am just, I really would like to make this one survive. This does look like overkill, but maybe it isn't because I'm trying to target as much of the media inside as well. Now, I normally don't have a problem when if my roots were to be wet, to douse them with hydrogen peroxide because as long as the hydrogen peroxide is fizzing on the roots, it's doing something. But in this case, I did not want to have wet media. This is more about the media than it is about the roots. So if there's molds developing down there, at least I can take maybe 80% of control and do something about it. I'm going to let this finish fizzing and then later I will put her into a calcium magnesium soak at 6.3 because she is in organic medium and uh, leave her there for about an hour and an hour and a half. If there were any snails in here, I doubt it. But if there were, their history now as well. Make sure that's really dripping down there. I know I won't be able to get into the middle. The mold was on the outside. And let's see if we can differentiate humid from mold. You see, that's mold right there. So we're gonna go in there a little bit more. And see that we take care of that matter. And maybe I need to do it like this, tilt the orchid down a bit of an angle and get the mold, sorry, the hydrogen peroxide to like pour onto that root. Let's have another look-see. That is all condensation, that's condensation. There is some sphagnum moss in there that I can see. This is something dried out, that's not mold. Otherwise, oh, there's a growing root tip. Ooh, yeah, there's a growing root tip. That's good. That's a good sign, despite the time of year. But I will leave her for a little bit to get used to my climate. And then if I see that root tip progress, then I'm going to attack her despite the time of year and just keep her toasty warm look at that and hopefully not lose her again 
so, so excited. Aurora 2.0. Woohoo! And look at her leaves. Now, the other one that I had were about half the size of the leaves. So, you know, mini Phenolopsis, when you treat them well, they sort of develop into medium sized ones. So maybe she's already a medium sized stage, despite maybe she's more mature than the other one that I had. But the other one I also picked up at the time, my attention was caught by the mottled leaves as opposed to the blooms. And then the blooms were so cute. And this is all a washout. Let's see, why is it a washout? There we go. The blooms were so cute on Aurora as well. Similar coloring. Aurora had all this little freckling and markings in the sepals and petals. She was not pyloric. And it's the pyloric factor here that makes her look a little bit like the ugly duckling. <laughs> oh, but she smells like a swan. But everything else is just like Aurora. So yeah, woohoo, guys, I've got, I've got that fragrance back that I've missed for over a year. And I am so happy she wasn't expensive. <laughs> So thank you very much for watching and listening to me yap away about a fragrance. Usually we go for blooms. Well, guess what? I am such a fan of this fragrance. Anything sweet memory and then times nine, I'm having it. I'm having it in my collection. Have a wonderful day, everybody. We'll follow the progress of this cutie here, Aurora 2.0 is now in Ninja Orchids collection and I intend to keep it that way. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye.